I, uh, <laughs> time for more live react. Okay. As you can see, I've watched about half of it and I have a lot, a whole slew of other work comparisons. And by the way, I worked for corporations. They were all Republican leaning <laughs> every single one of them. <laughs> but I will um, definitely talk to you about like some of the perks that were going on at uh, jobs that I went to. Like, lol, trans people aren't people or whatever the f right? And then they got banned off Twitter, which was a um, big mistake. I, I mean, Twitter be. became demonstrably less funny the moment that they took Babylon B out there. Uh, the moment they took him out. Former Twitter employee... Mr. Dunsonson? Yeah, come on in. You know, uh, you're 20 minutes late. Yeah, Twitter, we didn't have, like, start times. Schedules are a remnant of an oppressive colonialist regime. Oppressive colonialist regimes? Okay, well... Um, my last corporate job, um, I showed up the earliest of everybody on the team. Like, I would usually get there between 8 and 9. Um, because we didn't have official start times either. And the two more senior proposal writers on the team would show up mm, somewhere between 9 and 10. <laughs> they got retained, by the way. I got laid off. Look, the work here is pretty demanding. We need to find someone who can inspect all of our outgoing... Miss, are, are you okay? I'm sorry. I'm not really used to bosses using trigger words like demanding and inspect and work. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Classic. Only Jiffy Lube is demanding work. You know what I mean? You can't be, you can't have demanding work in a, in <laughs> That's awesome. Well, and it's also, it depends on what kind of work you're doing, too. Like, what are the expectations of your job? If you're supposed to be available at odd times, you get called after hours or you get called on your days off, which I have with every job I have worked for since 2005 has called me after hours and weekends. Every job, including my last job of Canvas team lead. This is a job. We don't say that either. Then how do you get any work? Yeah. Well, I mean, so how do you get any uh, labor stuff, production, the handwork, and that work, sorry, stuff done? How do you get any stuff done? <laughs> uh, strip has got tons of stuff done on Twitter. Oh, okay. Well, what would you say you did there? I was responsible for so much as a content moderation specialist. Some days during my afternoon cornhole sesh, I get a text telling me I had to ban someone. So then you'd have to... Actually, dude, I, it's so awesome. I love this, dude. More conservative comedy, please. I love it, dude. Come on, it's better than SNL. It's better than SNL. At least it's different. Now, here's why. Here's why. Okay, because it it shows you, it shows you what the f they think. Like <laughs> their point is like everyone at Twitter is just banning people. That's their job. Like your job, <laughs> everyone's job at Twitter is to ban conservatives. <laughs> It's so sick. It's so good. Like what? Well, and the thing is, too, that they probably are using AI to actually do the moderation at the first level and then have a content moderation specialist, if that's even like the title, um, would be the people who review your appeal, right? <laughs> so if you put trigger words into your tweets, you're probably going to get an, an auto ban as a result of that. Or if you have enough reports submitted against you, you'll probably get an auto ban for it. And then the only human level that's probably going to come in is reviewing your appeals. That's my guess, because I'm fairly certain that's how Facebook does it. Walk over to your computer and ban them? Uh, yeah. no. I would just hit a button on my phone and then BAM! Babylon B, banned. Libs of TikTok, banned. Steve from Fruitport, Michigan, you know he banned. And then back to Cornhole. Uh, all right. Well, what what else did you do there? Drink. I love, I love that he. The irony here is so painful. 
the irony here is hilarious. Like the the big burly conservative man working a jiffy loop. The the most terrifying thought that enters his mind, of course, is the fact that you know lives a TikTok might be banned, brother. Uh, which of course never happened. Um, but that's fine. Uh, that's so good. I know my audio is desynced. I fucking hate you for bringing that up over and over again. God damn it! It's so annoying. <laughs> that's what happens. Look like a sailor. They had wine on tap, mimosas, a full. They drank like a sailor, dude. This is so like old school conservatism. That's like old school conservatism is awesome. Okay. Oh, they they drank a lot on the job, and they were saying swear words. Micro. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, come on now. <laughs> it's like one of their favorite shows is Mad Men, too, by the way. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> or I Dream of Genie. Um, one of the companies I worked for, uh, this predates me only slightly, the, my time on this job. But when um, they were starting up, and yes, they were conservative, uh, right leaning. Uh, CEOs in charge of this company, they would have uh, a work week that was 10 hours. Um, no, I'm sorry. It'd be, I think, nine hours a day, Monday through Thursday, and then four hours on Friday, right? And then at, at, on Fridays, they would bring in a keg. <laughs> And by the time I got hired, they had they had put a new dude in charge of legal, who was like the the chief legal executive or whatever, and he put a squash to it. Except he couldn't squash one of the branches from doing it. I'm not gonna say who, where, what, but one of the branches continued to do it for years. Um, I'm, I'm sure they ultimately had to stop doing it, but like it, they were absolutely generating a party culture and it was, uh, work hard, play hard was one of their mottos. Brewery. They also had AA, which was kind of helpful for me. <laughs> one day at a time. Uh, well, congratulations. Uh, well, so I think I've seen everything that I need to see. Did you have any questions for us? Tons. Okay, first, you don't actually, like, expect me to come into the office, do you? Well, how do you expect to get any work done, labor done, stuff done at the factory without coming into the factory? Oh, so this is like a job job. Wait a minute. I thought you said that she was a content moderation specialist. What factory? What factory does Twitter have? <laughs> what is the fucking factory? <laughs> what factory everything that they're doing is virtual <laughs> yeah that might be a deal breaker for me uh also i didn't notice any meditation rooms when i came in do you guys have any gurus on site or is it more like a byog type situation byo what also i didn't see a qr code for your lunch menu but i assume your shrimp is non-gmo and cage free shrimp where'd you get shrimp we don't have any shrimp Hey, sorry to interrupt, boss. Pneumatic drill is on the fritz again. My favorite type is, like, these guys are the exact same as the libs that they're talking about, by the way, because, like, it was written by a guy from Zinc, Arkansas. No, 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 no. That's the best part about this, is that not a single one of these motherfuckers, and these aren't, I don't know if these are the OG Babylon B cast or whatever, but not a single motherfucker in that group of people has ever actually worked a fucking manufacturer at a manufacturing facility. Right, exactly. They are exactly. These are not factory fucking jobs. And, and these people are, are, they're just doing media. They're probably working from home, too. But I'll tell you straight up, when I worked for Ingram Micro 20 years ago, 24 years ago is when I started for Ingram, uh, we had a full-blown cafeteria that was like the size of something that you would see in an Ikea. Uh, we had sleep rooms so that you could take power naps. Um, <laughs> um, another job that I had, they had uh, set up a breastfeeding room. You know, These were all right-leaning organizations that were... Um, realized that the more you accommodate your employees for their basic life needs, the the happier they will be and the more productive they will be. 
And yeah, most, especially the millennial generation has really moved us towards working remote. And especially during a pandemic, this is the new normal, if you will. Literally the exact same comedy writers that you got at fucking SNL, except worse because at least like the SNL comedy writers are like, yeah, we're gay. We're gay as fuck. Uh, we've never done this sort of stuff. Our hands are, uh, are, are totally super soft. These guys, on the other hand, are like, no, we're not. We're not the same kind of like uh, gay SNL uh, type writers, even though we went to the same liberal arts colleges and weren't able to get the the, the comedy writers uh, gig at, at, you know, left. By the way, Blizzard. Just all you got to do is look up some articles on Blizzard. They were known as the top employer in Orange County. I don't know if they still ha have that claim to fame. But uh, they were allowing people to um, just wear jeans all the time. They, they could bring their dogs to work with them. Um, and what ended up happening is uh, they ended up having an incredibly misogynistic and sexually harassing uh, environment set up uh, because they just created a party culture. Again, they were creating a party culture. Twitter, by having their people work from home, they were probably more focused and more willing to actually put in extra hours because when you work from home, you don't have as much of a delineation between your start and end times. Just uh, publications because of communism, brother. That's the difference, okay? Like, they are literally the same kind of fucking theater kids, except somehow even less talented. Do you understand? Man, I need to go pick up some parts. I'll be back in five. Uh, it was grease. How did it get there? Because he worked, does stuff, engages in manual labor. Okay, that's it. I can't do this. I'm sorry, Mr. Dunsonson. We've decided to go in a different direction. All right, well. Okay, you're talking about a salaried employee versus a man, if, like a, a, an hourly employee, an, an exempt versus non exempt. Uh, th these are different scenarios. When you're a professional employee, you're not always going to work an eight to five job. It's not always going to be like that because you have to be available for other. Mm. I had to work late nights, weekends. I had to m hit hard deadlines. I had to chase down uh, department heads, the C level. Um, so to try and, you know, say that, oh, you, you've got to be there at this time. And it, it, like, that's not always going to be realistic, depending on what your work assignments are. And so comparing somebody who's doing um, a job where you actually have to evaluate um, people's appeals, that's a different type of, of occupation. <laughs> totally different type of occupation and there is no such thing as a factory for twitter i'm sorry to hear that miss <gasps> no 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 nope these damn lip tars don't want to work anymore dude <laughs> that was awesome that was a 10 10 okay 1010 would recommend. I just want to thank Elon Musk for returning all those people that are rifle positions as baristas and gas station attendants, which is not labor, by the way. Uh, you should make this an actual series. Twitter employee applies for office job. Wait, what, what do you think a Twitter job is? Twitter employee applies for IT job. Twitter employee applies for teaching position. Wait, what? This motherfucker said Twitter employee applies for IT job. What? Do these people literally just think people at Twitter are just banning conservatives? That's their job? Oh my god, they literally, I think they actually believe it. That's what they were doing, brother. They were just banning. They were just banning. Okay.